my name is Anne Begay. I'm Navajo from the Navajo Reservation, born and born there, but I've uh, traveled all over the country. We moved here to LA in 2001. The census questionnaire is just pretty simple. I found it pretty simple. But if uh, you don't understand it, you probably have to have someone help you. <sighs> okay, here's your... First, you read all the directions. My name is Kathy Peltier. I'm enrolled in the tribe of Navajo, but I'm also uh, Lakota and Dakota and Anishinaabe. I've been living in California since 2001. Moved here on September 11th. Don't you even put adopted mom. Stolen. Or foster mom. <laughs> Because I'm multicultural, you know, I, I mean, I'm different tribes. Um, the little thing that kind of stumped me a little bit was um, just what na uh, Native Alaska Native, um, it doesn't say enrolled. So uh, and that was a little like, okay, what do I do with, with that one? So I just put the one I was enrolled thinking that's probably what they want. So um, if it was a little more specific, I think it would be great. Otherwise, I would have put all my tribes on there. <laughs> My name is Frank Blanquette. I've been producing content for PBS for about 15 years. My parents immigrated from Mexico, Yucatan, Mexico, were Maya descendants. And I think this is the first time that I really pay attention to the census. Right now, teaching my nephews and nieces our language is really important to me, and making sure that they grow up with, with those ties to their cultural identity, with their indigenous roots, is really important to me. And when you fill out the census form, there's that option to identify with your indigenous roots from Mexico, Maya being one of those options. And I think it's really important for us to be visible, for us to, to count, for us to be able to identify with our indigenous roots within our community. Was there any specific questions that you feel would give Native people trouble? Uh, the household, how many people are in their household? Uh, because a lot of people are on assistance and sometimes it's hard for them to reveal how many people live in their home because, well, you know, colonization. <laughs> they, they cut you off from, from anything if, you know, they don't see it what they want to see. So uh, that, for me, that would be something. And I, I don't know if uh, the census will be sharing this with other people, like uh, food stamps or public assistance or any of that. But that's, that would probably be a concern. I think it would be a concern. And also if you receive uh, Social Security or some of those other government um, assistance, it might affect it, but I'm hoping it doesn't. I think there are a lot of concerns that the census brings up, but I think community members need to know that uh, the census does not affect Social Security, but it can affect housing in that if you do not accurately list your total household residence, the count for your community can be lower and your state might not receive proper federal funding to address the needs of its people. I also think that there's this fear, this really strong fear with undocumented immigrants to really trust the federal government. And I think them knowing that this information is confidential and that it is not going to be shared with organizations like ICE or INS, I think that's important. And I think that having that understanding will make a difference to my community and a lot of indigenous communities throughout the United States. So this line means five, and you count these as one. So it'd be five, six, seven, eight. And that's how you get the number eight. That's how you write the number eight in Maya. The community's really nice and friendly. I like, I like living here. They're more diverse, tribal-wise, whereas other states, they're more uh, one tribe, two, maybe three. 
there's just a lot of uh, uh, smaller tribal Indians, tribe of Indians here. And they all have their little tiny reservations. Unfortunately, some of them are not federally recognized. I'm gonna say what I think. Before moving out here, I've always been told the people here of this, of California, they don't know their tribes, they don't know anything. That's why they're not enrolled. That's why they're not, as, you know, but really, if you got to know the California tribes, you know, it's kind of sad that they're not enrolled, that they were just, you know, um, were outside of California is informed wrong about how the tribes are really are together. It's just, it's kind of sad that they're not tribal affiliated because, you know, they have such so strong culture too, just as outside of California. Places like California have federally recognized tribes and tribes that are petitioning for federal recognition. And it's important to note that the census is based on self-identification regardless of enrollment or recognized status. And Southern California and the greater Los Angeles area itself is home to the largest urban Indian population of American Indian tribes and indigenous communities worldwide. And the census should really reflect that in 2020. I think it's, it's good that we do this, not just throw it away like it's nothing. As Native people, it is important that we fill out the U.S. Census and that the head of household selects the tribal affiliation. That way, the whole household is counted as part of that tribe. It's time that we get an accurate count of Native people in the United States. Important federal funding for our communities is on the line. Let's keep showcasing the vitality of Indigenous cultures and communities today. More information about the 2020 Census can be found at 2020census.gov. And census information for California is available at census.ca.gov. This Culture Story Short was produced in partnership with FNX Television and in association with Indian Country Today. Thank you to Anne Begay, Kathy Peltier, and to Jax and Zaylin Blanquette. Special thanks to Karen and Buzz Wasler of the Scone Wasler Group for their help and hospitality. The log means lizard in Maya. And, uh, and joke means mouse in Maya.